Slim, why are you posting that? I'm ruining the surprise. Shut up, you fucking snitch. Um, so throughout Noche UFC, there will be a film, a world, and an act. The film consists of six short films, roughly 90 seconds long each, which will serve as interstitials, interstitials between the fights. Those films will be that will then transition into different worlds and environments to take up the entire LED screen that then the fights sit within. How much do you want to bet that during the short films, we will be watching adverts? How much do you want to bet? There will either be a massive break between the fights or we'll be watching ads and we won't get to see that. I bet it. There, it will either be too much of a gap or we'll be watching ads. I I know it. I know it as well. The movie just, uh, just ads. Yeah, I could see that. Brought to you by Modelo. Tales from Arabian Nights. Okay. It's going to be a subway surfer brain rot. Yes, it will. Do you ever realize how hard untalented most fighters are? Yeah, I know. It does get annoying, doesn't it? Could you realize how low level it is? I'm seeing that Chael retweeted a uh, thing in. Look at this guy responding and quoting it. MMA guru never having been with a woman, so he doesn't know things like this happen in relationship when fights happen. Shame he'll never learn about it. Just outed himself as a bit. Ain't no way no woman of mine is locking me out of my own f***ing house that I'm paying for and making me beg on video to get back in, which she'll then post on Instagram. The defense of this is insane. But these guys are going to these guys, you know what I mean? Weirdos. Chael retweeted it and asked what the f*** is going on. I know, I saw that, I saw that. I just went to see it now. Someone mentioned it in chat. Impression of Raul Rose's speech after winning in the sphere. At the end of the day, I just want to say that I can now buy my mom a car and um, pay off her house. So at the end of the day, I'm pooing. I don't know. Something about poo. Ian Ferry begging for a granny to take him back. <laughs> like, bro, she'll be gone in a few. All right, dude. Maybe, because she is a bit rich, maybe he's playing the long game. Maybe she let it slip that she, maybe he's seen some medical records and he's thinking maybe there's like five years to ride out before he gets all her money. And who knows, actually? Maybe Ian Gary's just at 32, he's gonna be a f made man. You never know. You really never know. She ain't rich. She has got a lot of money and she's from a rich family as well, which is why they're doing this game. How would RDA versus McGregor have gone in 2016? I don't know. I think McGregor would have beaten him. I think McGregor was untouchable in 2016. Anyone else? 15. 2015. That was the Alvarez fight, wasn't it? Oh, and it might have been early 2016, the Alvarez fight. You might be right. I think 2015 was the Diaz saga. 14 was uh, Aldo. But I don't know. It might have been late 2015 in uh, the McGregor versus uh, Alvarez fight. I need to know now. It definitely, it definitely wasn't late 2016 because he was fighting like every three months back then. The good old days, I know, dude. We'll never have him back. Good old six losses, McGregor, they call him. Um, no, it was late 2000. Wow, that was late 2016. So 15. Yeah, it was the Aldo fight, and 14 was his come up. Yeah, I got it off by you. Oh, man, I just think RDA would have been too much for him. Yeah, I don't think so. I think RDA, because of his problems with weight cutting to 155, I think he was primed for a knockout loss. I'll be honest with you. Anyone else? Like, I think if RDA and McGregor fought at 170, when RDA was still in that level of form, RDA probably would have beaten him. But if he was still doing the drain to 55, I think he was primed for a chinning back then. He was getting frail at 155. <laughs> Connor is the goat and he loves to ride goats. He likes goats riding him. No, not at that time. I think RDA would have beat him. I don't agree with you. Um, 
You think at the time that McGregor beat Alvarez, he would have lost to RDA. You see what Alvarez whooped up on RDA? If Alvarez had the power and the timing to catch RDA and put him out, he didn't even put him out there. It was a soy-looking TKO. But if he had the position and the timing in the first round, dude, Prime McGregor would have slept him. I'm sorry. He just would have done. Alvarez weren't known for his pop, nor his speed, nor his timing. He was all grit and durability and, and heart, you know? McGregor would have won. Does Ortega weather the first round storm against Lopez and get a decision or late sub win? Um, it's a three rounder, so I am going to go with Lopez. If it was a five rounder, I could see an argument for Ortega if you think he has survivability. I just think Lopez is going to be too dangerous on the feet. And, you know, I don't see it. Arnie Allen getting back at it. Well, he broke his hand again, didn't he? He always breaks his same right hand with his thumb. It's his thumb on his right hand every time he always breaks it because it's like a... He got... He rushed... I think early in his career, he messed up a surgery on it, trying to rush it. And uh, he ended up, like, damaging it before it was healed. So now his right thumb is always up. Always up. So, then know, we'll see. I heard him talk about it in an interview ages ago. I think when he fought like um, Nick Lentz, I think he said it after that one, if you're interested. Don't know what, which interview, but it was around that time, I think, because he broke it then as well. Prime Connor shot picking landing was God tier. It really was, dude. No one really had that in their game. I've got the earphone in again. I keep wondering, like, what is tickling my ear all this time? Why do that? Oday Osborne title run starts next weekend. If it does, yeah. That'll be such a smack in the face to everything I've been saying. It, ironic, unironically though, chat, have I not done him a favor? Because I feel like everyone knows he's on the card now. And they're going to be like watching and then maybe make a guru reference. Who knows? Did you watch Rogan? He always has terrible stand-up. Yeah, awful, awful stand-up comedy. Oh, unbelievable. It's almost bizarre. People forget, man. It's almost bizarre. Touch of death. What happened with Ian? Um, Ian got locked out of his house by Layla because they had an argument. He then went to get flowers and gifts. And he came back to the window where she's looking down at him. She won't let him in the house. She's recording this. Shows up with flowers and gifts. And she makes him do like a sing and a dance. And uh, she recorded it and posted it on Instagram. It's on my Twitter now. You can watch. It's so f weird. His face smiling up at her like, come on. I know you. I know you're happy now. Let me in. <laughs> it's so f bad, dude. He's confused at the start going. All right. Come on. I know you ain't crying anymore. Let me in. <laughs> And embarrassing and then Layla captioned it I think he's kind of sorry maybe <laughs> oh, hell Ian. what a what an idiot mate what a idiot Jesus someone said how good can the pussy possibly be yeah. and he's receding bad oh god no Ian it's not going well mate He'd look very strange bald as well. He's definitely a transplant type of guy, I think. What if the nutritionist was still in the house? Oh, my God. That's why she claims to have locked him out. No, you can't come in. And he's sneaking out the back in a towel. He was singing to her. He was. He was singing to her and dancing. <laughs> oh, Ian. We got to save Ian, dude. Somebody save him, cause I don't want to see him with a forty-year-old gold-digging European. There's a cougar on the prowl, bringing young men down. Somebody say, somebody save him, cause I don't want to see him with a fifty-year-old gold-digging European. There's a cougar on the prowl, bringing young men down. I missed that song. That was actually really catchy when it first came out. I actually was playing that. Shit. <laughs>